Welcome to apexinvesting.com. My name is Daryl Martin, and this is another webinar series And Be the Sniper or Be the Target. It's your choice. Make it today. And if you haven't joined us already, check us out. You can do a free month access to our trading room and to our tools and to our training at apexinvesting.com forward slash bootcamp with no credit card required. Okay, so go ahead and check that out. Also check us out on facebook.com forward slash apex investing and youtube.com forward slash apex investing. Um, let's see. Here. Ooh, why did that just stop? So the next up, I know why. So next up, we got to put disclosures. There's risk involved in investing. Know what you're doing before you do it, et cetera, et cetera. So um, feel free to pause and read that at any time you see fit. And tonight, we're just going to do some trade review. How does that sound? Go through some sniper um, simplicity charts. So uh, I really taught it step by step. Last week went really slow. If you didn't catch that webinar, go back and check it out. Like I said, it's on Facebook, it's on YouTube, and it's under Section 16 of the sniper training. So, you know... Um, obviously, I'm not going to go as slow through it tonight, but um, let's go ahead and pull up a simplicity chart. Um, one thing I brought up tonight in the room is, do you know what time the market usually starts moving in the evening? And this is really helpful so you're not wasting time sitting there while nothing happens. So who out there knows what time the market in the evening starts moving? So about 8 o'clock Eastern time. So most of y'all got it right. But about 8 o'clock. It opens at 6. But it usually starts moving around 8 o'clock Eastern time. So when the Asian markets open up. So if you look at this, you know, right here. We see like a whole lot of nothing going on, a lot of noise, and then we get to 8 o'clock, and now we start having something, okay? So, let's just start with the evening review, and then we'll go back into the morning review. How does that sound? So, I called out some of these trades in the room tonight. So, right here, starting at 8 o'clock. You see the solid line and the dash line angling down right there and then you see a bar close below it so that could be a little risky you may decide oh, I want to make it break the wall before I get into it either way you would have got in it did a massive pullback but our stop would have been if it closes above this line right here it went above it but it did not close above it. So it kept moving down, and once the solid line passed our entry point, then we start trailing with the solid line, moves on down. Even here again, we don't close above it. Keeps moving down. Over here, keeps moving down. Finally, we get a close above the solid line. And on that trade, would have netted or grossed at least eight and a half points. So not too bad at twenty dollars a point. That's you know one hundred and seventy bucks or so. Right after it, you see we got an angle up and another angle up right here. So we got to buy right at this point at ten sixty six twenty five. It starts going. Keeps going. And we see it close below the solid line right there. So we would have got in with both things going up. Breaks a tick of the high. We got our stop if it closes below the solid line. And then we start trailing with the solid line if it closes. Closes below the solid line as it moves on up. We followed up, followed up, followed up, and finally, like I said, right there, we closed below the solid line. 
So we go over, we check that one out. And here we go. Measure that one. Almost nine points. All right, so again, the entry bar is the bar where both red lines close down. The dotted and the solid, both of them closed down and both of them were red. Okay, that is our setup bar. So this is our setup bar because both lines closed down and both were red. And then it broke the low, so that becomes our entry bar. Does that make sense, Vodwa and David? All right. So now we got another one right here where both angled down. And entry is one tick below the low of the bar, whether it has a wick or not. Right? So both are angling down. That's our setup bar. Where I'm pointing at right here. Our stop is it closes above this line. And then we trail it down, waiting for it to close above the solid line. It closed at it, but not above it right there. Keeps going down. And on this trade, we called out, we actually got out down here, but um, it technically closed above it right there and then shot right back down. So if you held it all the way and you never took a profit on the trade, you would have got in here. And if you just closed right on the close and you never took a profit, despite that big pullback, you would have made two ticks. Not so bad. Not good. Not bad. So, and that's pretty much our evening right there. Now, this is not looking at the sniper chart at the same time which obviously would impact your results because you decide where to get in, where to not to get in, where to take profit, things like that. Yeah, two ticks didn't work out on that one, but what about eight and a half points times two, you know, making 16, 17 points. You can't make the big trades if you don't make the little ones, right? Would I have tro closed at 2052? No, because it closed at it, but not above it. And remember, all that took place between 8 o'clock and 9 o'clock. That's one hour of trading. So who can tell me how much pretty much 17 points of profit is on just a single contract on NASDAQ? About three hundred and forty dollars. There you go. Is that bad for an hour? Could you do that and be done for the night? And remember, you don't gotta trade more to trade profitably. There's three trades. I mean really one of those was enough. But there's three trades. One hour. If you did 10 contracts, you'd made $3,400. So it's just a matter of time, which you gotta be patient for and let your account build up and you can do more and more contracts and that money gets a lot bigger exponentially with the exact same amount of work. So pretty cool to actually have a system that works well during the Asian session. No, nope, this one did not close above the line. It closed at the line. So that would literally easily make your day just on a single contract in one hour. And that's trading at night. 
All right, so now let's go ahead and let's back it on up to this morning. We got our 9.30 open. We don't trade till 9.35 or so. We let things get all calm down, right? So we got markets going all around the dynamic magnets right here. And if you would have taken this one without taking any consideration, that one would have been a loss, okay? So right in the morning, and I want to show you the winners and the losers. I don't want you, I don't want you to get the idea that every trade wins. So right there. 16 and a half points. Oh, that looks pretty rough. And this is why I want you to, the reason I want you to be aware of that, why do you think I want you to be aware of the losses? There's a lot more volatility during the day, right? And what did I tell you all to use during the day when trading these? Last week, what did I tell you to trade? Micros during the day. Yes. So you don't get killed. Okay. But then it turns right back around. It goes up. And... We make a small profit. Five points. Okay. Now, this would be what could be considered... Now, that one didn't really break the will. We're going right into a wall. Here, we're going up. And we get an angle up on a flux pivot. Would have been a little tricky, but... That still did not break the high. Angling up, that one does break the high. And we go over, and you trade, and you would have got out. Now, you would, you're above break even. So you either got break even, or you took a profit, or you avoided the trade because of why. Why might you have avoided this trade? Because if you didn't, you would have taken a four point loss. Exactly. There's a flux. You're like buying right into the flux level. So you're sort of asking for it. Now, something I want to bring up. What is happening this week? Like what's going on that the entire market is waiting on? We got NFP. We got earnings. But there's something bigger than that happening. There we go. We got, we're starting to get a bit of Congress. So everybody is waiting on the stimulus. Have y'all noticed the last two days have been very, very range bound? So that's what we're waiting on. So the entire market is in a very small state. We're not expecting massive moves. So are you going to be more careful trading big moves during a market like that in those conditions? What is your better bet when the markets are wild, but they're range bound? What is the better thing to do? And I talked about this last week. We talked about this when we said range bound, range bound, range bound. Okay. So I want to look at this with you because I think it's important to show you. Remember I said, what did I say is your bread and butter last week? Did I say it was simplicity? No, I said it was your sniper trades, right? Because if you would have taken all of these simplicity trades in here, you would have went in and waited for that one and then it, came over here and then you would have went over here and as soon as this one went long you're waiting on it waiting on it and then it came down here and then this one well finally you get it here and you got a winner nothing there nothing there wait on an angle up it breaks got a loser there got a nice winner right here if you're trading this morning, you were sitting through all of this. Right? Did we make money calling out trades this morning? 
for those that were in the room. By the way, there were some nice moves, by the way. There's a huge simplicity short. It's a nice simplicity long. Another nice simplicity long. You see that? Right? Coming off the dynamic magnets. Yeah, we made money trading in the morning. But the afternoon really had the bigger moves for simplicity. You see that? Y'all see these big moves happening in the afternoon? What do you think happened in the afternoon that caused us to start getting all this movement? Two things happened today. Starting around at 1 o'clock, and then two things happened. Anybody aware of what those two things are? Not earnings. Earnings don't happen in the middle of the day. I'm trying to help y'all put some pieces together. So, yeah, okay, so I got the two answers. So, one of them was Congress and Pelosi and all the Schumer and all that are like, yeah, it may take another week, it may take another couple weeks. So, that obviously put a damper on the market. The other thing was the big Beirut explosion. So, I mean, that obviously was like a what's going on, you know. I don't know if y'all saw the news on that already or not, but a big factory exploded over there. It looked like, a, looked like an atomic bomb. I mean, it damaged the airport that was like six miles away from it. So, two big things happened in the afternoon. News came out of Congress about the stimulus. Okay? And the Beirut explosion happened. And that gave us some volatility in the afternoon. And so things really worked out. Now, what is one of the things I tell you and that Lori is great about telling you if you're seeing this kind of stuff right here? If you're just seeing long, short, long, short, long, short. What does she tell you? What is her number one thing? Sit on your hands. Be patient. Because if you are, what will happen? You get rewarded because the market will change. How did we know the market changed? I mean, looking at all these, you're like, eh. But then all of a sudden we start seeing simplicity firing off. Okay, that's your clue. You start seeing a couple big simplicity moves. That's your clue to get ready for another one. Like one right here, you're going right up into a wall. You're not going to take that, but what about this one? What about coming right down off of all of these walls we've been stuck in all day and then you get a setup after seeing a big simplicity drop like that and you have room before the dynamic magnets. With that, do y'all see the difference there? Y'all see here, look at what's happening. We're stuck in between all of these walls. So we open up and look at all this. All we are is we're stuck around these walls. Tons of walls stuck together. Is this a place you want to trade? For big trades. Like, are you want to be? Do you want to be trailing stuff inside of walls like this? So, and it's not a rhetorical question. I'm, I'm really asking you. Like, do you want? I want. I'm asking you this because I want you to ask yourself that when you're looking at the chart, because you could have got pretty cremated in here, trying to trade simplicity right here. So, and unfortunately, we can't get Lori to delete the walls to make it easier. <laughs> So yeah, you got all this chop, and could you see the chop coming knowing that there was all these walls? Like the market opened up, it was right into these walls. I mean, there's like walls everywhere, fluxes everywhere. <laughs> you know, run your errands in the morning if there's a rush, you know, right? 
But do you want to run them during rush hour traffic? You're going to be patient and let the rush hour traffic get over with. And when the roads are clear, then go run your errands. Does that make sense? Sort of like trading. If it's not clear, if it's all clogged up, and we'll go back and we'll look at this on a sniper chart. I mean, this many walls? Are you, seriously, do not take trades. Even that one right there. Like, don't take this trade into all these walls. It's the same as all the other ones. Yeah, that one happened to work. And that's a clue things may start working. This one is your big clue that things may start working. So now you're waiting on one. And then you get this. And this is like picture perfect. It edges its way back up to the walls, but then breaks down. And gives you a simplicity short. I took this trade today. Do y'all see why that's a great trade? It's coming out of all the walls. I mean, do y'all feel this is good to hear? Like, this is helpful information? It's not just about, like, it's, it's not just what's on the chart. It's thinking about what's going on in the world. It's thinking about what's going on on the chart. So if you let all that stuff clear out and then, hey, now we're below all that mess and we're getting a short, this is a, these are longs going into the mess. Here's a short coming right out of the mess. The last short going out of the mess worked well. Maybe it's time to start trading simplicity. So you go in and here's your entry. You got your stop right there. When it moves past it, you're trailing. And you're waiting for it to close above, which it does right here. And now you grab 18 points. Okay. So you may not want to grab the first simplicity out of the gate, like over here, just because things are going a little nuts. Get a temperament for the market. Right? Like right here. We're going in, we talked about taking this short and getting hammered. Right around these dynamic magnets, which what happens on them? Markets are magnetized to them. They pull to them. It's pulled up, it's pulled down, it's pulling back up. Might want to avoid that. May not even take this one. We're inside of all these walls. I'm going to wait till we get out of this wall territory before I even look for simplicity trades. Hey, we're starting to get a move. Now, that was a nice move. I'm okay that I didn't get it. It's edging back up to the walls. Ooh, now it gave me a short. Now I make some actual cash. So what about the short around 1147, like right here? Well, was this coming right off of the wall? Or did it come off the wall up here and then work down and then finally give you a short? Like, is this still choppy looking? Right, so... I'm not into it. And how much room do I have to move to that dynamic magnet? Not much. You know, maybe five points? That's not usually what we're looking for in a simplicity trade. I mean, I'll take it, but... Over here... You know, we got 10 points just to the dynamic magnet without anything in the way. And we're coming right off of a wall, which I love trades right off of walls. So we go over here, and what happens right after that? We get along. Not here because it didn't break the high. Not here. Here. Then we go up. So that doesn't close below our low. Go up, up, up. And then finally closes right there. Grab another eight points. You're up 24 points for the day. You were patient. By the way, you just did that. Congratulations in less than one hour. 
What's 24 and a half points? Four hundred ninety bucks. Was that worth sitting through all the crap all morning long for two and a half hours, sitting on your hands and waiting for things to set up? Again, that's just on one contract. So we got another long right here, but it's going right into the wall, right? So we come down to here. Like, okay, well, that's going into the wall. I don't like that. Now we're in that choppy area like we had before this. Come down, come down, come down. Now we break up above the dynamic magnets. And then we get a setup bar right here. Y'all like this trade? Is this good? We can head back up to that wall. Right off the dynamic magnets, heading back up to the wall. I like this a heck of a lot better than I even like that trade. That trade... Made me a little bit nervous going to those dynamic magnets. This one, going up to them, I really like that. So how does that work out? So and this is where the whole reading the charts comes in, you know? So we get that one and we catch it up to here. Another 18 and a half points. Now, are you real interested in trading simplicity right here? Like, inside of all of these walls? I mean, we're at 36 plus another 8. I mean, do you want to trade simplicity in the middle of all these walls? No, just like this morning, no. So far, would you be glad that you didn't? Y'all glad you didn't? Finally, you get one that breaks way down, and that was a monster trade. It would have been beautiful to get in. But did you know that back here? Like right there, did you know that was going to be a great trade? No. I mean, I would have loved to have taken that trade. But I would have been glad I didn't take all the other crappy trades in between. So that one flew down. Would have made a fortune. And just... I'm going to show you just because... I mean, that one made 36 points. So even if you took a bunch of crappy trades, does 36 points make up for a lot of that? Yeah. So you're going to catch some big moves. That one, I wouldn't have caught because I wouldn't want to taken it into all those walls. That's 650 bucks on a single trade. Now this one is going back up to the dynamic magnets. So let's think about this. We we'll go over here. We get a long right here. Doesn't trip, doesn't trip, doesn't trip. Finally, right there it trips. So right there. So I get in this trade. And I don't know what's going to happen next. I haven't looked at this because I wasn't trading this afternoon. If I go long right here, I got 10 points up to that dynamic magnet. Right? So what do you think the first thing on my mind is? That's a target. Why didn't it trigger two bars before? Let's look. That's up, up. Didn't break. That's down, down. That's down, down. That's up, up. It did not break the high. That is down, down. That's the first one that's up, up. So both angling up and then the high is broken. So the first thing on my mind is there's my 10 points. So I'm going to hop in this trade 
I'm going to set a take profit right here. It's a little more than 10 points. It kept going. If I would have held on to it into the dynamic magnets, then it finally broke below right here. I would have made another two points. Was it worth holding on to it? Or do you think you're better off just grabbing the 10 points and walking away? How much is 10 points? What is that worth? Two hundred bucks, exactly. Take the money and go golf. On ten contracts, that's two grand. And I, I bring that up not because I know a lot. Of, most of y'all aren't trading that size yet, but I want you to realize it's the exact same amount of effort. It's the exact same trade. It's just a matter of time, and but you got to make it there. Yep, and you got to take your stops no matter what. If it hits and breaks below the line, then you got to get out. Now it's turning around, and I got a short right here into this dynamic magnet. What do y'all think? Do you like it? Negative. Okay. That went over. It actually closed above. It would have lost a few points. So now we're just oscillating around these dynamic magnets right now. Now we're back up in the walls. Who wants to trade here? Yeah, a lot of these are the same lessons like when you trade Sniper. So do we want to trade Simplicity while it's up here? Inside of all these walls. I'm not saying you can't take Sniper trades then, but you definitely don't want to be taking Trailing trades then. And that one took off. Is it okay that you missed that trade? Yes, because you missed a lot of crappy trades by not taking a bad entry. Right? And that's, you really got to get to that point where you're okay with that. So now, right here, we're at four, we're at the close of the day. Does that help some? Did I cause confusion or did I help open your eyes a little bit? So you want to sort of look at that big picture. And now, did you know, did I know that Pelosi and Schumer were going to come out in the middle of the day and talk? Obviously, nobody knew that bomb was going to go off at that factory or whatever. Like, we didn't know that was going to happen. Okay, so it's not like I knew, hey, when this happens, then I'll do this. But I did know that, expect some chop, especially with what's going on in Congress right now. So don't be taken. And when I got a bunch of walls, that tells me this is going to be mostly a choppy area. Is it occasionally going to break out of it? Of course. But mostly it's going to be a choppy area when I'm up in the areas with all the walls. Now, that doesn't mean I can't go grab nine ticks. But I probably don't want to trade simplicity then. So it's not it's not just a pure signal take every trade. It's you literally gotta pay attention and look and see when things are clearing up to set up for a possible, you know, ideally like ten point plus move. And that's sort of what differentiates it a lot from the other sniper trades, because we're just going in and we're in and out for nine ticks. On this it's a trailing trade. We got to have some room. We don't want to have a bunch of walls or bumpers in our way. So, because I know some of y'all have been like trying to take it and you're like, I just don't get this. Oh my gosh. You know, but when you back up and go, okay, that makes sense. That's the mistake, you know, that I was making was I was sort of just taking every trade that was there. So, y'all want to check out a sniper chart? Look at the trades on it. All right, 
let's see here. Me. Here we go. Made like 400 bucks trading in the room tonight. All right, here we go. Let's go to our normal opening here. Got our 930 open. Okay, so we're... Let me get a little backdrop. All right, so we've been angling down. Market's just now opened up. Sort of going slow first thing in the morning. We got an elevator long coming off of a 0.25 dev, a paw, and a flux. What do you think? There we go. So we take a buy. We're out. Especially knowing that there's all these paws in the way. It's like, I already got two paws in my way. There we go. There's two more paws and we're running into fluxes. I'm out of the trade. So nice little bounce. And I mean, if you sort of look at a little bit of a range here, bouncing up, bouncing down, bouncing up. Looks like a probable area it could go to. Let's see, is it an ETX? Uh, nope, it's not within two ticks. All right, so we go over here. We get a long. Neck NTX with DR. Do we take it? And I sort of showed you the answer, but should we take that trade? So my answer is no. Most of y'all said no. It's not coil chop. Coil chop would be up, down, up, or down, up, down. But look, we're going right into a wall. So let's not even consider the trade. Now it becomes coil chop. But it's too late by that point. Right? That is, that is actually an ETX. You're right. That's an ETX because it was on a paw right there. But still, it's going into a wall. Not a level, like not, not just a simple mini magnet. It's going into a wall. Okay, we got a short TX there. Can we take that trade? Yeah, Brett, Brett says, if you in, understand not to take it trade into walls, you will definitely increase your probability. So is this an ETX? No, it requires a PAW or mini magnet, ZOI, or I block to be within two ticks, an existing one of an existing PAW. Not a deviation, but a PAW, ZOI, mini magnet, or I block. So it's not an ETX. Because there's no existing paw, mini magnet, ZOI, or iBlock. It's also going right into two flux levels. It worked. Is it okay that we missed that trade? Somebody says, is it ODD? It is not ODD. ODD requires a higher high with a lower OD number. This number is not higher. This price is not higher than that price. So it was not ODD. The price has to be higher with the lower OD number, or if you're going long, the price has to be lower with the smaller OD number. Yeah, I look at flux levels pretty similar to walls as far as strength. The reason it pops up a diamond is because I have the auto trader. It's at apexinvesting.com forward slash auto trade. And that diamond would tell it to take a short if I had it turned on.
Is it HD? No. You just now started a trend. There's no HD. It, that requires it not going as high with a bigger number. This number is smaller than the last number. All right, now, what do we have here? We got a TX long. It's an ETX. What else is it? It's four things. It's ODD. And it's a double TX. Nope, a smaller number on a down move means less volume on a lower price. That is actually the opposite. So if it went further down but used less volume than the last leg down, then that usually signals a reversal. Now I have four things telling me to take this trade. There are some fluxes up here, but I have four things telling me to take the trade. You think I'm going to take it? When I have four things telling me to take it? Yeah, I'm going to take it. Okay. Yeah, it's probability. Probably going to break through everything and go. Make sense? Do y'all see why we like that trade? I didn't know it was going to go that far. I haven't went back and reviewed all these in detail. But that was a great trade. Four things. Back to the flux levels, but was it just a simple little TX? Or was it a TX, an ETX actually, and an OD, and... A double TX. Well, you didn't know about the double cluster till after the fact. Okay, you didn't know about the you didn't know that until like back here. You didn't know there was a double cluster. And two, double clusters don't matter on HD trades and OD trades. So with all that, could you look for simplicity to trail? Four things going. Well, let's look at it. Okay. What is that? 10, 55, 31's when that bar ended. Let's see what simplicity looked like then. And Q. I need to be on ES. There we go. Let's scroll on back. So we're on ES over here. By the way, how do y'all like the simplicity chart on ES compared to NQ in the middle of all these walls? Just saying. Do y'all notice anything? Yeah, it's a lot cleaner. Okay. Y'all see some simplicity? Long, short, long. So we get over here. We're going short. Now we get it 1055. We're already in a simplicity long. We don't have all this stuff in our way. So basically, you got to trade in the middle of a simplicity long. It didn't even tell you till here to get long on sniper. And then it ran up. So. 
Is it maybe worth watching both? Just sort of showing you the day there. But yeah, let's go back. Let's look at the same day. 10, 55. Here we go. I think this is August 3rd. Yeah. All right. So 10, 55. That's right when that happened. Sniper didn't give us a long yet, or Simplicity didn't give us a long yet. It pulled back down. Right there, it gave us a long at 10.58. And then it freaking went to the moon. So you would have probably had your Sniper trade, and then you would have had a Simplicity trade with it. I have the master template and I added on the detectors. This is just your sniper template. But the master template adds on the automated trader if you have if you own it. And then I add on the detectors. So it took off, came down and then took way off again. Okay, let's go back. Sorry. All right, so that one took off. All right, here's a TX long. Well, no, nope, that's not a TX long. It doesn't have a trap door. Here we got a TX short. Do we take it? Well, it's at a wall, but it, it broke on the other side of the wall, so I don't mind the wall. It's against DR. There you go. That's the reason why. It's against DR. It would take profit before the fluxes, so I don't even mind those. But it's against DR. Like, it would take profit by before it even hit the fluxes. But we don't trade against DR. Yeah, he also got two to three bar chop. All right, now we got a third bar swing. We just pulled down to a new low. We're above the wall this time. Notice how we're on the other side of the wall. So we can take that trade, right? It's a perfect place for a third bar swing. Bouncing off of the fluxes. Gives us an entry above the wall. It didn't work. Is that going to happen? Do you sit there and take screenshots and try to figure out what happened on that trade? Is that your next move? Look for the next trade. Look for the next trade. Exactly. Don't do your screen do your screenshot after you're done trading. Now is there anything on that trade that might have been a clue? I mean, it was above the wall. It was a third bar swing. It was coming off flux pivots. There is against DR, but most third bar swings often are. But is there anything else? There's two things. All right, so here are the two things. 
Most of y'all got one of the two. Some of y'all got both. One, you got a paw and mini magnet. That's like having double mini magnets. Okay? Like right in your way when you start. And look like right where it went to. Okay? But here's the other thing that many of you may not know on third bar slings. It's not good when the second bar has a wick. Ideally, that second bar has no wick. You want to see it pushing up, pull back a little bit, and then take off. But it's like trying to go up, trying to go up. Like it's having a hard time. You can also, somebody just brought up a really good point. You can look left with their chop in this area if you look straight left. Yeah, literally, there's exact chop right there, right? Now let's back up even more, which I know some of you might be guilty of this. Are we really in a trend or are we ranging right here? What are third bar slings best off of? Which, by the way, you would not. Could you have tell? Could you? Would you have been able to tell that we were ranging? Just looking at that. So you maybe need to have. You can do one of two things: either make sure you're zoomed out enough to see it, or my preferred strategy is actually I like to have up two charts if you have enough screen space. Where, because I like the zoomed in one so I can actually see all the stuff happening on order prints. And I have another one that's zoomed out. Right? So that way I can actually see what's going on. So you get, basically got a range and you're buying near the top of the range. Third bar swings are best off of trends. Your second bar has a wick. So a lot of this looked good in the sense of we came off fluxes. We had a, you know, TX there. It was above a wall. So that was in our favor, but what was against our favor? Second bar had a wick. Going right to a paw and mini magnet. And we're right smack dab into the top of a range. Does that help? And I want to sort of walk y'all through like the reasons why it looks good. But I also want to let you see that. And I wanted to walk you through the reasons why. So you got like three good things and three bad things. What does that make your probability on the trade? 50-50. Okay. Okay. So was that a good lesson? Did y'all pick up some tips on third bar slings right there? Because I know those can really bite you. Awesome. Okay, now we got another TX right here. Can we take it? What all is in our favor on this TX? It is against DR. It's ODD. It's also an ETX. It's coming off of a flux. Lay to Paul. It's not a double TX. Well, I would have had a white line down here on my detector if it was a double TX. So, it's, yeah, it's an ETX. Coming off of a flux. Doesn't have anything really strong in my way. Bottom of the range, that's good. So the one thing in our way a little bit is the deviation is right here. So we got one thing in our way, but we got like four things in our favor. So let's see what happens. So that ODD is a big thing. It's usually going to give you some push. Especially 
like that. You've got to learn to read ODD so you don't just take every ODD. Take them when you got some things in your favor. Now we got a short coming off of a wall. What do we got with this trade? What else we got with it? ODD isn't as strong in a range, but it is still something to look at. You got a paw. It's a double TX. It's near the top of the range. It's within two ticks of another paw, so it's an ETX. So it's an ETX, a DTX, but the DTX is going against the trend. But it's at the top of a range. So are we really going against a trend if we're in a range? No. We're going through that dev level, but have we crossed through that dev level over and over and over again? It's somewhere back there. It calculates it. So, we, you are correct. We cannot take DTXs against DR except when in a range. There we go. Where to go right down to? If you wanted to have a little target, went right down to the flux. Yeah, we also had a little divergent right there. And then we're right at the end of the day. Alright, so did y'all pick up some good stuff on that? It wasn't HD because it had to be a lower low with a higher number. Y'all want us to do a few more of these like going forward like on webinars? We haven't been doing these a lot lately, so I thought maybe we would stop and go through. And I wanted to show you ES versus NQ on simplicity too. Did y'all really see that difference? Like looking at that, like it was just massively different. ES moves, it moves slow, but it doesn't move near as choppy. Especially if you're on that NQ choppy range. If you want to look for a simplicity trade, what should you probably do? If you're an NQ and you're stuck in between all those walls, what would be a better thing to look at? ES. And by the way, ticks are a buck twenty-five on ES, so they're worth like, you know, one hundred twenty-five percent more than NQ. All right, well that's what I got for tonight. I just wanted to go through and you know review some simplicity stuff, review when not to do it, show you ES versus that, and look at it all. Scalping ES at night, I'd use the same target, seven ticks. I did one ES trade tonight that I called out in the room. It was profitable. I do not... Okay, that's a good question. What about at night on ES? I don't trade simplicity at night on ES. It doesn't move far enough to make it worth it. So that's a great question. When do you know to increase your contract size, like from one to two or whatever? Wait, 
I'm assuming that you're talking about like you're trading a funded account like with Lilu. Wait till you made double the profit goal. So let's say the profit goal was three thousand. Wait till you've made six thousand. If I got four confirmations, would I take it into a stack? No. Nor would I take it into a wall. Those are just too strong. All right, we all have a fantastic evening. I'll get this uploaded on YouTube and Facebook for you. I'll put it on the website tomorrow. I'll probably stick this one under section 16 since we went over simplicity with it, okay? And uh, y'all have a fantastic night. Again, if you would like to learn more about what I talked about tonight, I know it went sort of fast if you're new. Check us out, apexinvesting.com forward slash bootcamp. And we walk through it all step by step. We're here to help you as a trading community. You're not on your own. And um, we do these webinars once a week for review, but we also talk out, call out trades, you know, in the morning. And sometimes in the evening. Usually I'm in there... I'll text it out in the evenings, and if I'm going to do the webinar that night, then I'll, I'll usually, like tonight, be in there. All right, have a good night.